Spanky Framps here with lesson number two with a wacky sound education. Today we're going to be talking about components. What makes up the components of a live sound reinforcement system? Let's look at an interesting block diagram. Duh, not that interesting, but we'll see. So here we are with the four components of every live sound system you'll ever work on. They are the inputs, which are typically a microphone, maybe uh, instruments that the band's using, keyboard, drums, guitar, something like that. Those are connected by wires to the mixer. That's the second item in the, in the components. And what that does is it takes those individual channels, mixes the sound together, and then spits out one single output at a low level voltage, fed over to a power amp. Power amp boots that power, and sends sends the signal in a in a stronger power sense to the speakers which then project the sound out into the audience like i say those are the basic very basic components every sound system has those four items in addition to the four basic components there are often other components added in in the more sophisticated sound systems and so i'm going to talk about two of those that we often use in our community. One is sometimes the wires that go from the inputs to the mixing board are not long enough to reach all the way from the front of the stage out into the mixing board area. So there's a thing called a snake. And all it is is a box that the instruments plug into, a big bundle of wires that runs 100 feet or so back to the mixing board and connects into the mixing board. The second optional components that are sometimes added in is the monitor system. In order for the performers to hear themselves, sometimes they can't hear themselves out of the house speakers, there are speakers that are pointed back toward them so they can clearly hear their own performance and perform well. And so there's a power amp and a speaker system that's called the monitor systems that will sometimes be added in. So what do those components really look like in real life? Well, this is a complete sound reinforcement system. This particular system is called the Fender system and we use it a lot in our community because it's very sturdy, very portable, got the power amp and the mixing board right there together. Inputs, microphone, guitar that's plugged in, oh here's an iTouch, eye, eye all of those are inputs to go into the mixing board. The mixing board itself has dials and knobs that allow us to vary the strength of each of the individual signals so that we get a balanced mix and from the mixing board it goes to the third item the power amp where is the power amp well in this system the mixing board and the power whoa that's why we call this wacky sound education in this system the mixing board is in the front the power amp is built into the back it's all in one unit which makes it very portable easy to use so from the power amp, the signal comes out to these speaker wires and go to the speakers, the fourth component. So there we are in one compact system, those four components. Another system we use quite a bit is the gig rack. It's similar to the Fender. It takes inputs along the front as a mixing board then it also has the power amp combined with the mixing board into one, one complete unit. And then the speakers, in this case, plug into the back. And a third mixing board that we use in our community is the Samsung. It is another step up from the other two we just looked at. A little bit more sophisticated capability for mixing. It's got an equalizer built in but it has in place for the inputs, mixing board. Again, it's got a built-in amp in the back and the speakers plug into the back. So what we're gonna do here is just talk about the components of an audio system in a bigger setting. So as you can see here, we're in a church building. We're standing behind the soundboard and we go from the inputs all the way to the output. As you can see, there are microphones up here on the stage. There's a drum kit, there's keyboards, there's plugs here for guitars. So all of those are inputs and somehow they got to get from up here on stage back to the soundboard that's out there in the audience. So you see all this wiring is, is going and it's running under the stage. And from there, this is the snake. 
and all those different plugs are coming from all the different inputs from the drum, from the various microphones. And then the snake itself, the output of the snake is this cord here that goes down through that vent and it runs under the floor. You can see here the snake comes out of the, from under the floor, it branches into all the different wiring that plugs into the, all the different channels in the back of the soundboard. So we covered the first two components, the inputs, the snake, this is now the soundboard. Output from the soundboard actually goes back through the snake, back up toward the stage where the amps are located. Output from the soundboard comes back through the snake, which is back there behind the stage. And then wires come from that, from that snake back around in this direction to where the amp rack is. We've got four, four different amps in this rack to run the left and right channels for the main house speakers and these other two run a couple of the monitors. And the reason the amp is up here in the front near the stage is because that's where we need to be close to the speakers. So the speakers are the last component. This speaker here is a typical house speaker. So as the performers are performing up here on stage like the keyboardist, she's standing actually behind the house speakers and can't hear very well out of the house speakers. So that's typical of why you need monitor speakers that you see here on the floor. This monitor is pointed up toward her so she can hear her own self singing and playing the keyboard and hear the mix with all the rest of the musicians. And that's the setup that allows these musicians to play to a larger venue. Four different sound systems all with the same basic components looked very different, but I wanted to give you an idea of what those different components could look like in real life. Join us next time for how to connect up things. So that's our lesson on components. This is Stanky signing off with a wacky sound education.